hello guys and welcome to a new video today's video is a follow-up to my last video which was some highlight clips from recent games i had so what i'm gonna do is share my thought process during these fights why i did this why i did that and how i managed to win these fights please let me know if you like this type of videos if you want to watch the clips without the tips and interruption then check out my last video i'll leave a link in the description Let's get started. The first situation was against Gears Squad. I would start from here because there is an important tip related to awareness. As I was down here, I hear type 25 shots nearby. The first thing you want to do when you hear shots near you is check the kill feed to know if, the, if it's a bot or a real player. So I check the kill feed right away and I see the name of a real player. And this isn't just any player. She was part of the team or the squad that landed in the platform and they wiped everyone there including a top clan. So I had to be careful. After killing the second bot, I check the direction of the shots again and I see their squad rushing me. You can already tell how thirsty and aggressive these guys are, they were coming for me. I decided to retreat and reposition myself because it wasn't a good spot to fight. They heard me kill bots so I'm already exposed and I had a broken level 2 vest and 100 HP. On the other hand, these guys just came from the platform so they probably have level 3 vests and full HP. Also, I only saw two players, I didn't know where the others were. Always try to get high ground to get better vision over your enemies and help split them apart. As soon as I reached the roof, I heard footsteps of one girl. She was alone minding her own business and she wasn't aware of my presence. So it was a perfect chance to kill her. As I knocked her down, I heard her say that I wasn't normal. Now in my server, when people tell you that you're not normal, it means you're cheating. Now I know they're panicking and I can use that to my advantage as it will increase my chances of winning this fight. Notice how I changed my position right after I knocked her down. It's important to do that to avoid getting pushed by entire enemy squad. So I had to reposition again and find a better chance to kill another player from their squad. This was a bad spot to fight because I would have been sandwiched between the two enemies so I had to reposition myself again especially that I didn't know the location of the last player. <laughs> As I was trying to use the zipline to get high ground, I heard footsteps and this time she was alone. So again, this was a good chance for me to engage and kill her. I waited for the last player but apparently she wasn't around. This is a 1v2 situation but it's a good example on how to split enemy team apart in open areas. I knocked a player so I decided to rush him and finish him off since I didn't see anyone else in the area. Suddenly two of his teammates show up landing from an airborne which put me in a rough situation. Knowing that there is an enemy over here, I used the tree to block his vision and prevent him from hitting me. 
all his shots were hitting the tree. This allowed me to fully focus on his teammate. Now I can switch to the other player and finish them off. This also shows why I use hip fire at close range because I had good vision on the area and I was able to see both of them. If I was using ADS then I wouldn't have been able to see the other guy since opening your scope limits your vision and I would have been dead for sure. Final circle against a full squad, I already made a mistake by exposing my position trying to kill that guy but it's okay as long as I don't panic I can try and win this. First of all I had to find a cover and luckily this rock was right next to me. It provides me with both cover and a bit of high ground. Now since it's a 1v4 situation in the last circle I know that the enemy squad will be rushing me so all I had to do is just wait for them and try to kill them one by one. Notice as I was shooting at this enemy I was moving to the left. This helped me dodge some of his bullets and at the same time I prevented his teammates from joining the fight by blocking their vision. Ninja perk comes into play here. The silent footsteps. I can hear their footsteps but they can't hear mine and I can use that to my advantage. All I need to do is use this rock to split them apart and take them out one by one. Again remember to switch positions and keep your enemies confused. The enemy reaction here was too slow because he didn't hear me coming but she also made a mistake by using ADS which wasted a lot of her time and gave me a chance to retreat and heal up. I know opening your scope takes split seconds but trust me these split seconds can change the outcome of a fight so remember to use hip fire at close range. Notice how she's missing most of her shots that's what panicking does to a player. This clip has two important tips. First of all, it shows the importance of third partying, which is basically engaging a squad while they're busy fighting another squad. First of all, I fly around the area to try and pinpoint the location of the enemies. At the same time, I was trying to figure out the best spot to land at. This spot over here was perfect. It was at high ground and I limit the chances of getting shot from behind. So now I can fully focus on one direction. The best thing about third partying is that you skip the step of splitting the enemy squad as they are already split apart fighting another squad. And secondly, they are most likely damaged. It was easy for me to determine the real player from the clones because he was looking at me the entire time. Remember clones never look to the side, they always look to the front. Five kills with the least effort, all thanks to third partying and perfect positioning. Another final circle situation. In this clip, I will share an important tip and also mistake that I made. This is a skill that everyone needs to learn. Notice how I'm hiding most of my body behind this rooftop and only exposing my head and shoulders to be able to shoot through. This is what enemies see from their perspective. Notice how I made it extremely hard for them to aim at me and at the same time their full bodies were exposed to me. And to make it even harder for them I was moving left and right while shooting 
It's also important to not overcommit sometimes. So shoot some bullets, then take cover and check the area around you. See if anyone else is trying to flank you. This is the mistake I made. I pushed towards the enemies to prevent them from reviving their teammates. It's always a bad idea to push in the final circle as most squads use trap masters, especially in this season. Like literally everyone is using trap master. And since the circle is small, it's easy for them to place it in a perfect spot. Luckily, I barely had enough health to stay alive and knock one enemy down, then heal up. I went back to the original spot which I shouldn't have left in the first place. We both were outside the safe zone but they were in a bad spot. They were in a worse spot than me and they had to move before I do. So all I had to do is just wait for them to be in the open. Finishing off the last player with an awesome ninja kill. I hope you guys find this video helpful and again it's a new type of video so please let me know if you like it and also let me know if you hate it don't be shy i accept all comments and if you want to see more of these situations then we can make it into a series thanks for watching and see you in the next video